You can see where your fuel line is going to go onto the carburetor. You have this extra line here. This is just an overflow tube. Go ahead and just let it hang down. You have another one which is on the opposite side of the carburetor and just let it hang down. If you, uh, the, the, what these are for are just vent slash overflow tubes. If uh, you see uh, fuel coming out of it, uh, you've got an issue with your float in your carburetor and that means it needs some servicing here. Okay, so we've got our gas tank here. I'm not installing this tank here. I'm just showing you what we need to do because I'm waiting for a chrome tank that's going to go with this bike here. But you've got the gas tank. You have your, your bung here on the, uh, the, the gas tank for your, uh, your petcock. So here we've got the petcock here. This plastic fuel filter here, take it, throw it away. You don't need it. And this one here I previously had installed on a bike. I'm just using this one as an example. But I go ahead and put some Teflon tape on them. It's not absolutely necessary, but uh, it does help with any uh, small leaks. I'll get two revolutions on it. Here, the red piece here, the washer acts as a spacer as well it helps seal gets it positioned properly you've got the the bung screw it in take your time they don't always clean these threads up the best in the factory make sure you don't get it cross threaded get it hand tight And then I'll tighten it up just a little bit more. You don't, you don't want to crank on it. You go cranking on it, you'll break it here. There we go. We've got it plenty tight. The gas tank will mount on the bike here. You've got your strap here, which will go on. Typically what I'll do, I'll put it on. I'll put a flat washer, a lock washer on one side and just start the nut here and then put it on the other side. Uh, one warning, you do not want to get your hardware on these mounting studs. You don't want to get it really tight. All you want to do is get it just tight enough to where in operation your gas tank won't, won't turn on you. Uh, what I suggest do is get it snug enough to where it, it moves just a little bit if you give it a, a nice little tap ride it a little bit and if you need to tighten it up tighten it up in very small increments just a little bit at a time if you go cranking on this uh, real hard you'll you'll break it here and you'll you'll wind up leaking uh, sometimes these threads here have a uh, powder coating on it uh, from the factory and your hardware the uh, the nylock nuts or the nuts that come with the kit will not uh, go on it very easily I have a um, a die on it where I can uh, clean the threads so uh, you might need to go to the hardware store and get, I think it's a, a five millimeter die and a metric die and uh, clean the threads. Uh, some of them are six millimeter too, so you'll have to uh, get the, uh, the appropriate one. So uh, we've got the, let's say we have the gas tank mounted, then we need to hook the gas line up, but we need to put our fuel filter in. Here is your fuel filter. If you notice, you might not be able to see it, but there's an arrow on the fuel filter pointing in this direction. That's the direction of the flow of gas. So what I would do is cut my fuel line about here, put the fuel filter in. Here, remember the direction of uh, the flow of the gas is down, this way here. This would be the inlet, this would be the out outlet of it here. And then uh, put this piece here between the fuel filter and the uh, the gas tank. Okay, so once you get your gas tank on, your fuel line set up, what you want to do is go through the bike from one end to the other, check and make sure everything has been properly assembled, that your hardware is tight, 
not over tightened but your hardware is, is snug um, that everything is, is, is put on properly here uh, then we're re then we would be ready to go ahead and uh, and start up the the motor but like I said even check uh, if it's a brand new bike check that your front axle nuts are are tight and secure make sure your handlebars are, are secured here that your stem is put in and secure your motor mounts are all secure uh, the the uh, Allen screws for the motor mount plate are in and secure, that your gas line is set up properly, that your throttle cable works properly, and that it, go, that it uh, goes all the way back against the, uh, the adjustment screw on the carburetor when you release it, uh, that your chain is, is, is on and uh, properly tensioned, double check your rear wheel, make sure your brake clamp is on uh, properly holding the brake arm on otherwise uh, you won't have any brakes make sure that your chain tensioner is uh, properly uh, set up on the bike that it's good and tight against the frame that it's not going to move uh, that your axle nuts are good and tight that every your uh, fender is set up properly and the like here and then you're ready to start it so what you're gonna do to start the bike, obviously just picture we got a gas tank on it here. Now this here is a four stroke motor. Uh, you have your oil in the motor, so that's where you're going to get your lubrication. You run on straight, unleaded gas. Uh, put you some gas in it. You may want to, uh, when you turn your gas petcock on, you want to make sure that gas flows out and flows into the carburetor. Sometimes you may get an airlock here, uh, get, just ha have a uh, too much air in it or even not enough gas in the gas tank so you need to put enough gas in your gas tank to make sure that the uh, the weight of the gas pushes pushes it through the fuel filter into the carburetor if it doesn't sometimes what I'll do is remove the fuel line from the carburetor turn the gas on get ready to pinch it off when gas starts to to flow out or gets close to flowing out I pinch it then push it back on and uh, allow the carburetor to, to fill up with gas. Okay, so here is your choke lever here. Right now the choke is in the off position. Looking straight down on it here, basically the choke is turned in a clockwise position. You have this flat part here. It is pushed out towards the right side of the bike. Here you also have this registration pin, this pin here that the other tab will, will stop on. So that is in the running position. For starting the bike, of course, we, we put gas in it. We turn this into the starting position. Looking at it from the top, we turn it counterclockwise to where this tab is pushed against the pin. And as you can see, now I'm manipulating the throttle. Okay, so this is full throttle here, all the way open. As you're not going to turn the throttle hard because you could break the uh, brake components. This here, is, everything's going to go nice and easy. So we don't want to open it up full throttle. You're going to open up about maybe a third of the way. Then you're going to grab your rope start and give it a pull or two. Might take three or four or five tries here the first time you start it up. When it starts, you're going to manipulate the throttle back and forth here and pretty much immediately once you get it started it'll probably die on you a couple of times don't worry about it that's just par for the course it's a brand new motor um, what you're going to do is give it just a little bit of gas the motor's going to pop and sputter and immediately turn the choke clockwise that will be in the running position and manipulate it as you get your motor warmed up it will run smoother if your motor uh, is idling too high or too low, you can adjust the idle by screwing in this, this black plastic screw, getting a Phillips screwdriver. You will screw in clockwise. Do it only about a half a turn at a time here and uh, manipulate your throttle back and forth as you do it here and uh, screw in clockwise to increase the uh, the RPMs of the motor and counterclockwise to decrease the RPMs of the motor. I just ran this, uh, cranked this up for the first time. I had the chain nice and tight for the first run and I, I ran it up and down the block once and I, I pull back in and the chain is this loose. 
that is to be expected. Your chain is going to stretch, and it's going to stretch a good bit your first few runs. Uh, not only is it going to stretch as well, it's going to uh, give the sprocket some wear, particularly on your four-stroke, your, uh, your front drive sprocket. It's, it's going to wear in and settle in. So don't crank your bike the first time and go for a 10 mile ride and not check your chain. Your chain will be slapping around and uh, quite possibly will come off. So uh, ride it uh, not even a half a block, come back, check your chain, snug it up. Uh, you can bring the, uh, loosen up the nut here and raise the, uh, the plastic wheel or as well simply move the the uh, chain tensioner back. I'm going to move the chain tensioner back on this one here and, and get it snugged up here. So uh, first few rides, rule of thumb, check your chain after just a very short short while and uh, keep adjusting it and uh, over a short period of time your chain will get settled in. Okay so there we go we've got the completed uh, bike here of course minus the gas tank I got the gas tank off here. I hope you enjoyed the video if you like it give me a thumbs up Click subscribe. Thanks for watching.